What's the best tool for applying masking fluid? Let's find out in today's video. Now my favourite tool for applying masking fluid has always been this, a ruling pen. In fact, it's always been what I advise my students to use, but the truth is there are many things that I haven't ever tried. So today I'm going to be testing eight of them. And just to mention before we start, I do have a new phone, so if the uh, the picture looks slightly different or the sound's slightly different, do let me know. It's supposed to be much better for video, so you should get a clearer view once I point the camera downwards and we start testing out these masking fluid tools. I'm going to be working today on Fabriano Artistico Extra White Paper. I normally use a practice paper here on YouTube, but I don't want the paper quality to affect the way the masking fluid applies or comes off, so we're using the good stuff today. I'm going to be using a blue masking fluid so that you can see it on camera. And the one I'll be using today is the SAA Blue Mask. And we're going to be using the same picture for each tool. So I don't want there to be any differences between, you know, the way I apply it in terms of the actual subject matter. So what I've done is I've actually traced a little picture of a moth eight times. So I'm tracing today because, as I said, I don't want the fact that, you know, I might draw one better than the other to affect the way the masking fluid applies. So we're going to keep everything as consistent as possible while I test out these tools. We're going to go through eight of them and see how they apply. Then I'm going to put some paint on top, allow it to dry, and then we'll take each one off at the end and see how they've done and see if I'm right and if this is actually the best tool for applying masking fluid. Now do be aware, of course, that because this is the one I most often use, and we'll also be using some brushes, because I paint a lot and I'm quite good with a brush, I hope I'm good with a brush anyway, be aware that the best tool for me may not be the best tool for you. So I'm likely to do better with this one anyway, just because I'm used to it. And I'm likely to do better with a brush because I'm okay with a brush. Now, if you're a beginner, you may find that one of the more rigid tools is better for you because it's always easy for a beginner to manipulate a hard point than it is for them to manipulate a brush. So just bear that in mind. This is just my opinion. Everyone else's experience is going to be somewhat different. So let's point the camera downwards and get started with tool number one. I'm quite excited about this. This is a special brush for masking fluid. I've never tried these before. Apparently you don't need to put soap on them or anything like that. They'll just rinse clean afterwards. So not only will we be testing the application, but we also need to test how well they clean when I finish with them. So you see I've traced some little moth shapes on here. Now to be clear, I wouldn't normally put masking fluid over all of the outlines on something like this unless it was some kind of design. It's not how you would naturally use masking fluid. We're just using this as a way of testing the masking fluid and I will be filling in some areas as well just to see how that works. Now I've got here a special brush for masking fluid application. These are sold by the SAA and I've got three sizes here. They came in a set. Now, I don't always put links to specific tools in the description of my video because some of these things are not available where the majority of my audience are, which is in America. And also because, frankly, the Amazon affiliate links break so often and are worth so little money to people that it's just not worth my time. You can easily uh, look for these things if you need to obtain them. So I'm going to start by pouring my masking fluid into a little ceramic dish and that's going to stop me from spilling it. So I did give this one a little bit of a shake earlier. You never want to shake these too vigorously, otherwise you end up with an awful lot of bubbles. So there, that one looks okay. Now I am someone who is really neat and almost never spills paint, but masking fluid is a different thing. It's so easy to spill and so many people I know have spilled it. And if you get it on your clothes, it's really, really not good news. So I'm going to start by using this medium size paintbrush. So I'm just going to pick up a bit. I'm just going to start tracing across these lines. And so far it's applying very well. It's actually applying in a lot more of a fine sort of way than I thought it would. I've always preferred myself a hard point for applying masking fluid, but it's super interesting to try a brush. I think it's the case that, you know, different tools will give different looking results. I imagine that you will, of course, get a more painterly effect with a brush because the line is naturally going to go thinner and thicker as you're using it. And I think I'll just try filling in a few areas as well. So I'm painting these stripes. I'm going to fill in different areas on each moth just to make them a bit more interesting. Let's try filling in this large area here. I'm actually finding it very easy to apply. So I'm going to get on now and fill in the rest of this little moth. 
So I'm actually really impressed with this tool. It applied in a very sensitive way. Blocking in larger areas was very easy. The only downside was occasionally I felt that the masking fluid was almost running out and that there perhaps wasn't enough on the brush. But I think that will actually give, you know, as I said, a much more sensitive painterly effect. Now, what about cleaning it? It's certainly semi-dried on the brush now. And I'm told in the instructions that all I need to do is put it in warm soapy water and that because these are very synthetic bristle, it'll just wash off. So here we have aforementioned warm soapy water. So let's just give it a swirl. Right, so there's definitely, you know, there are little bits still left on the bristles there. They do seem to be pulling out. I wouldn't say that's come 100% clean, actually. There's still quite a bit on there. Now, before you write in the comments that you can put um, soap on a brush before you use it, we're gonna try that later in the video, but this is a brush that was specifically made for masking fluid. It may look clean, but I can actually see there's still masking fluid in the little bristles there. So not impressed with the cleanability of this brush so far. It may be that I'm doing it wrong, but honestly, there were no more instructions than just warm soapy water. Next up, we have an embossing tool. You also get a similar tool to this for nail art. So for moth number two, we have an embossing tool, which looks like this. They come in different shapes and sizes. Some of them have multiple points. I have one that's almost like one of those old fashioned ballpoint pens where you click the top and a different embossing point comes down. So you get larger ones like this and you get smaller points like this. You actually get tools for applying nail art. I don't do it myself, I get someone else to do my nails. I'm not competent, but you actually get tools for applying nail art on Amazon very cheaply that look exactly the same as these embossing points and can be used in the same way. They're very cheap and easy to get hold of. I've never tried one for applying masking fluid, but plenty of people use them. I think I'm going to use the finer end of mine because it's still quite big and we're just going to dip in and um, see how that applies. Well, actually, surprisingly, it's not as terrible as I thought it. I thought it was going to be, you know, really difficult, actually. But it does seem to be holding, you know, a little bit of fluid there, behaving somewhat similar to uh, a ruling pen, actually, in that you're just picking it up and then it's sort of distributing along and you have to dip in really quite often. So I think what we'll do is we'll try um, we'll try filling in a couple of areas. Let's fill in these areas here this time. So it's just a matter of sort of putting a bit across and then sort of spreading it with the tool, almost in little circular motions. I suppose the advantage it has over a ruling pen is that it, it's not as sharp. Sometimes with a ruling pen, you can end up almost scratching the paper. So, so far, actually, I thought this would be a nightmare, but... Um, so far, it's not working too badly at all. I'll get on and fill in the rest. So here's my second moth done. As I said, actually applied a lot better than I was expecting. And another advantage over the ruling pen is that it doesn't pick up as much. So with the ruling pen, there's a danger sometimes that a lot of it can sort of get behind the uh, the nib or in the middle of the nib and sort of decant onto your paper in a big blob. It's certainly gone on a lot thicker and more firmly than the first example with the paintbrush. Took a little longer, but actually I found this tool pretty easy to use. Next up, we have something else I'm very familiar with, and that's an old fashioned dip pen, though I've never used it for masking fluid. So for moth number three, we're going to use this um, old fashioned dip pen of mine. Now you can see it's pretty gunked up. I actually allow them to become this way with uh, rust and, uh, and ages old bits of ink because I like the fact that it thickens the nib somewhat so you, you pick up more ink. Um, whether any of that color will, uh, will re-decant itself onto the paper remains to be seen. Obviously, ideally you would use a new one of these and so far, it's not doing that well at picking up the um, the masking fluid. Perhaps I am just not picking up enough. You can probably hear it's making a sort of a scratchy noise on the paper. And this is my worry with using this tool is that it will scratch the paper and that the masking fluid will be somewhat tougher to remove being pushed into the paper grain a little more. I'm finding it quite um, inconsistent at the moment to apply, much as it is with uh, with ink, actually. But we will at least get um, a fairly painterly line, one that goes thicker and thinner in places and isn't too artificial looking, which is why I actually prefer a dip pen when I'm working with ink to a liner pen, because you get that variation in the line and it just looks, you know, much more painterly, much more artistic. 
than using a regular line. So hopefully it'll have the same effect on my masking fluid. Let's fill in a few areas. So far, I'm not finding it as easy to use as the first two tools, but certainly um, it's working. And I'll get on and fill in the rest of my moth. You can see how I've got too much over here. What you can do with any of the tools, if that happens, is just dip in and use that almost like a little inkwell or sort of put your nib into it and then spread it across like this, allowing it to spread out a little bit on the paper. So that's my third moth done. Not too bad, very inconsistent with the line strength. In other words, it went very, very weak in places and then blobbed onto the paper in other places, but the result isn't terrible. Next one we're going to try is my original favorite and that's a ruling pen. At this point, if you're enjoying this video, can I ask you very quickly just to do me a favor? Can you just press that like button if you're getting some value from this video? YouTube rewards channels with audience interaction. So if you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people. Videos like this take an awful lot of hours and editing to make. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's completely free and you really need to ring the little notification bell. So if you click that, you can choose to get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make at least one free video a week here on YouTube with extra content for Patreon subscribers. So next up, my tool of choice thus far in life is a ruling pen. And uh, this one's a bit gunked up from previous use, but it won't do any harm. And you're just going to dip in like this. When you get a ruling pen, it's actually a draftsman's tool. And you see it's got a screw on the side. You need to do that screw up so that uh, the little prongs at the end meet together, unless you actually want a double line. So applying it here, actually now I'm finding it's um, gone rather thick on the top there, hasn't it? Probably because I'm using a deeper dish than I usually use. It's fairly easy to use. One thing that does uh, cause problems sometimes with a ruling pen is that they get gunked up. So, so after using it for a few minutes, you find that the um, the masking fluid sits in the middle part of the ruling pen. And this the same will happen actually, no doubt, with the dip pen, is that the masking fluid builds up in that cavity and then you're going to have to stop and sort of pull out the, uh, the dead masking fluid, as it were, in order to carry on. So it's applying quite similarly to the dip pen. Personally, I think it's a little easier to use so far than the dip pen. And let's try filling in one or two areas. Again, this isn't too difficult at all. So I'll carry on now and do the rest. So nothing unexpected there. As always, a few issues with the fluid building up in the center and decanting down onto the paper in a bit of a blob. And also, of course, this will be quite gunked up. Now, the best thing to do is let it dry. And then I normally get a scalpel blade in there and pull it through. Next up is the one I've been absolutely terrified of. I'm hearing that people use toothpicks. I'm not at all certain about this one, but let's give it a go. So let's have a go. How bad can it be? So here I have um, a toothpick and <laughs> it's hardly picking up any fluid at all. Let's try again. Well, this is a surprise because I was very worried about doing it. Oh, I've dripped some there. I was worried about doing it, but I was worried more about control than anything else. I wasn't worried that I simply wouldn't be able to pick up much. I mean, I've, I've got some there. I managed to get some to come up there. But this is, as you can see, this is pretty much a disaster. Nevertheless, in the uh, <laughs> in the spirit of scientific experiment, I'll, um, I'll continue. So what can we say about this one? Um, unmitigated disaster would be two words to say about it. Apart from anything else, it's so flexible that it's pinging little splatters across the paper. Of course, splatters are fun, but you know, it's not ideal if you're not controlling them. And really, it doesn't pick up anything at all. All that's happening is that occasionally I'm kind of getting big blobs and then I'm able to spread those to other areas. So overall, not at all impressed with the toothpick idea. I'll stick to using them on my teeth. Now an alternative to a ruling pen is a glass pen. I personally don't find them as good for ink work. They're a little bit too inflexible for me, but perhaps they're great for applying masking fluid. Let's find out. So next up we have a glass dip pen. Now these have a kind of um, a spiral shape around here. The idea is that they grab the ink and then they decant it through the nib. I actually found that I don't like this um, for ink as much as I like the dip pen because it's not flexible. With a flexible metal nib, you can press harder, splaying out the two sides of the nib and getting a thicker line. And you can't do that with 
a glass pen and it's not actually doing a very good job at all. We started out so well, didn't we? We started out so well in this video. Everything was working for me. And now I'm trying to use this glass nib. Oh, well, that's not good news, is it? Never mind. At least we'd, at least I managed to get some on the paper. Let's spread it around a little bit. Okay. And we'll take it down that little antenna there. If you actually are using any tool and you get a big blob like that, the last thing you should do is start blotting at it and messing around. All you can do really is let it get completely dry, you know, remove it and then try it again. Don't try scrubbing at it because all you're going to do is push it into your paper. Now, I'm almost using that as a little inkwell to sort of drag everything further around because just dipping in like this and picking up, unless I get so much that it literally comes out in a blob, it's not flowing and you, you I mean, I've dripped it now as well. You wouldn't expect it to flow because it's um, a lot less mobile, a lot less watery than ink. So literally, just when I thought that nothing could be worse than the toothpick, um, we, we seem to have gone down another level in uh, abysmal masking fluid application. Nevertheless, I shall finish the moth. So absolute mess there. Um, to be honest, it wasn't possible to even draw with the masking fluid at all. All that was happening was that I was getting so frustrated, I was dipping the pen in deeper and deeper, and eventually blobs were falling onto my paper, and I was thereby, once I'd got a blob, I was able to kind of spread it along. But actually, it wasn't working at all. Next up, we're going to try a silicone tool. These are sometimes called colour shapers or blenders. Let's see how this one does. I have actually tried this for masking fluid before. found it a little bit too soft, but let's give it another go. So for number seven, we have a silicone tip. Um, this one's actually got a paintbrush on the end, but they don't usually come like that. I'm not sure why mine does. Now, I've used this tool before, as you can see, so I know it's not going to be a complete disaster. I find them uh, a little bit too soft and it, it's not that easy to control how much of the fluid you're applying to the paper. So I'm getting kind of thicker lines where I don't want them, as it were but it does at least pick up the masking fluid and you are at least able to apply it fairly quickly. I'm finding that I'm getting lines here that are much larger and wider than I would like, despite the fact that it's got quite a fine point on. And so I'm not getting the control so far with this tool that I would like, although let's be honest, it's still a lot better than the last two. So there we are. I found most of the time I was picking up far too much masking fluid. What it does work really well for actually is for spreading the masking fluid over a fairly large area. So if you've got, and I never advise putting masking fluid, you know, over half your paper, it's a good way to tear it. But if you've got any slightly larger areas that you want to spread the masking fluid across quickly and you don't want to use a brush, I think this tool would actually be quite good. But for actual accuracy and controlling how much masking fluid you pick up, it's not as good as some of the others. Next up, we have one of the most commonly used tools for masking fluid, and that's just to use an ordinary brush dipped in some dish soap. I've never tried this one myself, always been a little bit worried about my brushes. I'm not going to use my best brush for this, but nevertheless, let's give it a try. So this time I've got my ordinary brush and I've got some dish soap here. I say dish soap here in the UK, we would call this washing up liquid. So I'm just gonna apply my washing up liquid and then I've seen people online say, you know, don't put too much on. So I'll just sort of use my fingers and um, sort of spread it through so that it's got a coating on, we hope. And um, there we go. So let's get on and um, apply to our last moth. So just like the other masking fluid brush, it's applying quite easily. Just as if I were painting, to be honest, it's it's no more difficult than if I were actually painting with uh, with watercolours. In fact, I think because masking fluid is a little thicker, it may even be easier to apply than paint in a small area. As I've mentioned before on my channel, once you water your paints down quite a lot and you're using a, uh, a very watery mix, shall we say, you're going to have a lot of trouble with surface tension. And so when you use thicker paint, it's it's not always possible, of course, because of the colour, but if you use thicker paint, it actually is a little bit easier to control. Let's try filling in some of these stripes on the body this time. I think this brush is a little softer than the masking fluid brush, not finding it quite as easy to control, but overall, it's pretty simple. 
So that was all quite straightforward. We need, of course, to clean the brush. One other thing that interests me is that masking fluid is, when wet, somewhat water soluble, which means that some of this washing up liquid will have got into the, uh, into the masking fluid itself and perhaps into the paper. We'll see later on if that affects how it comes off of the paper. Meantime, let's see if we can clean this little brush. I haven't been using it that long, so it hasn't had time to, uh, to particularly dry on, but let's give it a little bit of a wash, see how it looks. Now that seems to have worked quite well, although I would never advise using a best brush for masking fluid. I actually can't see any residue left on that brush. Now, of course, we have my results in terms of how I felt about the application, but that's only part of the story. So what I'm going to do now is pop some paint on. I'm not going to make any effort to paint these in a realistic style. As I said, I wouldn't have put masking fluid around every single line anyhow. But the uh, the original moth, I think it's a hawk's head moth, it kind of was a lot of green and blue. So I've got here, I've got some fresh green. I've got some phthalo blue. And I've got some burnt sienna. These are all colours by Jackman's Art Materials. And I myself have designed some paints for Jackman's and they are available in sets. I'll put a link to those in the video description. You can find all these colours there too. So let's put some paint on our moths. I'll put it on quite strongly because we want to see a good colour contrast when we take the masking fluid off. So all I'm going to do is just pop some paint on like this. Maybe we'll have a little green on the wings like so and then for the outside i'm just going to pop some of the brown round now one handy color mixing tip is if you mix blue into brown it'll always neutralize it a little bit push it towards gray or here we've got a grayish green happening and that's because this is quite a warm brown it's got a lot of yellow in i'm just going to work my way around and paint all of these moths and a little bit of background behind them too. And then I'm gonna let them dry for a significant amount of time. Now you can see here, the moth color is bleeding into the background. I'm not at all worried about that. If I didn't want that to happen, then what I would have done is allowed the whole thing to dry before I put the background in. But all I'm looking for here is just to get some color contrast so that we can see how the masking fluid has worked when we take it off. So at this point, I've actually left the board to dry overnight, not just because that's a good idea, but also because I had martial arts training last night, which is why I now have um, a little bit of a bruise forming on my arm. I think I've got concussion too, so um, who knows what the rest of this video will be like. Did get smacked in the head a couple of times. Never mind. Believe me, I gave as good as I got. So what we can do now is remove the masking fluid. Now, I like to use an eraser. You can get special masking fluid removal tools. They're basically just a lump of textured plastic. If you want to uh, purchase such an item, feel free. It's always a good idea to you know, keep your fingers off. And even if you do use your fingers, don't pick at it. Don't pull it upwards because that's likely to make your paper tear. I do have a whole video on masking fluid mistakes if you're having trouble with it. And we're just going to remove these with an eraser. I'll get on and take all of them off. And then I'm gonna give you my top and bottom picks and let you know if I still think a ruling pen is the best tool to apply your masking fluid. So here we are, the final results. Now, do I still think a ruling pen was the best tool? Actually, I don't, and that really has surprised me. I wasn't expecting to get any surprises within this video, and I got a lot. So a ruling pen, which is this one here, I've written them underneath so you can see, ruling pen was perfectly reasonable. Dip pen wasn't too bad, didn't find it that easy to manipulate. The silicon tip, again, just as before, I found it a little on the soft side, but some people just may find that it suits them. It certainly cleans off of the tip very, very easily, far more easily than a brush. Now let's look at the ones which were horrendous. So bottom place has to come to the glass dip pen. Now I've heard people say that this works for them. I can imagine that perhaps they have a thinner masking fluid. So remember that every paper, every masking fluid is different and so is every person. And so some people are just going to get different results. But for me, I think more effective actually to place your, uh, your picture on a mantelpiece and um, remove the lid from your masking fluid and throw it across the room at your paper from the other side of the room, about four foot away, probably get a better result than this. Now, toothpick, actually this one was as horrendous. It just doesn't look as bad. Neither of them would hold any fluid or deposit any fluid 
other than drips onto the paper. It's just that the toothpick sort of um, did seem to spread it a little better. It still looks like this moth has been out on the alcohol and really hasn't recovered the morning after. So what were my favourites? Now, the special SAA masking fluid brush. Now, I might have even given this maybe first or perhaps second place if it wasn't for the fact that it was appalling to clean off. Now, you might be looking at this video and saying, well, you didn't make much of an effort to clean it. You know, you could have put neat soap. Well, I could have done all those things, but the whole point about this brush is it's supposed to be completely different to an ordinary synthetic brush. It just didn't seem to be to me. I imagined there was some kind of special kind of silicon bristles. Is that even possible? I don't know. And that the masking fluid would just peel away. But frankly, it didn't. It was no better than a synthetic brush. So I've got a top two, really. Now, my favorite, surprisingly, was the embossing tool. I found it really, really easy to use. It picked up the fluid nicely. It applied it nicely. I can imagine that with different size tips, you can get different effects didn't clog up like the ruling pen and was overall far easier to apply. And I think certainly for linear things like text, window panes, things like that, this is going to be perfect. Second to that, or not even second, but different, was the ordinary paintbrush dipped in the dish soap. Now this one gave a bit of a thicker application, but certainly if you wanted softer lines and you didn't need those sort of sharp lines, then this one might be a better one for you. My only slight reservation with this is, again, the idea that some of that dish soap, some of that washing up liquid, as we call it in the UK, is going to get on your paper. Now I've done previous experiments with things like um, bubble textures in acrylic paint, Dish soap is not good on watercolour paper. It's going to have a major effect on what you apply on top. Now, I didn't apply any paint on top of these areas, so I would be very wary of using it, certainly over large areas that you're going to overpaint because you just don't know how it's going to affect the paint that you put on top. For this reason, my absolute number one pick today was the embossing tool. So do let me know in the comments which is your favourite tool for applying masking fluid. Perhaps you use something else altogether. Or perhaps you haven't even started using masking fluid yet or maybe even been put off by bad experiences in the past. I've lots of other videos on this channel all about how to avoid mistakes when using masking fluid. It really can be a great help to your paintings as long as you use it carefully. Now, before you leave this video, don't forget to pop into the video description. I have lots of free stuff for you there. I've got some free downloadable PDFs full of art tips that you can grab for no money whatsoever. I've even got a free watercolour painting course that you can take. If you enjoyed this video, I think you're going to like the video I made about the top 10 drawing mistakes that I see students make all of the time. They're so easy to fix. You can watch that video right now.